how to create an abstract splatter like design in Critter, PC or Mac. You need to set up a brush. Now I've got a document here, 300 by 300. Create it via the file menu. Go to the paint layer, and I'm just gonna apply this brush. Any of the brushes, and I'm using the freehand brush tool. So freehand brush tool, basic five size brush, or any of the others, and just apply it. I'm using red at the moment, I'm just gonna apply a very quick brush. Now, of course, it's zoomed in quite a bit, so you can see a bit of pixelization there. However, it is only 300 by 300, so. Let's just change the color. I'm gonna go with blue. And you can apply any design. Don't have to paint straight lines. You can have spiral designs, circle designs, triangle designs, stars, whatever. And I'm gonna go with green. And you, of course, can use different colors and all that sort of, apply effects to it as well. You've got a paint layer there in the layers panel. And what you need to do, just remove the background. Now it won't let you delete it straight away. Weirdly, it, you have to deselect the lock. So deselect that, that little lock there, and then delete it. And you get transparency. So you've got transparency, and that's the key thing. You don't want the white background. Once you've done that, you can go to File, and you can export, maybe Export Advanced, just use that, and save it to a folder. Now I've got my sprays folder here, and I've got one already, exactly the same. Red, green, blue lines, one. Just save it to a PNG file, any name, put it in a folder and save it. So that's done. What you can then do is let's just go back to this and let's clear this. So you can see it completely clear. And then what you do, always great go to a starting point of any brush, any brush, doesn't matter. Maybe even select this one. Just as an example, select that and then just go up here. I've got normal there and I'm just gonna click. And now what you'll see is you've got pixel engine. Well, you don't want that. What you want is the spray. And you can expand this out and then with this, you just, do the, just click there. I know it's sort of tucked away. Sometimes when you come in, it doesn't look like much. You think, how do I change the pixel? You'd think they'd have it here. Wouldn't make a more obvious choice. However, expand that and you've got engines. And then go down here to spray. With spray, at this point, nothing happens. In fact, put all there and select one of the brushes. It's probably gonna be a couple of brushes that you will get that will have spray. So you can just select that. I never remember which one of my brushes here are spray. That's why I always go initial one brush and then just find it via this. It's probably a better way of doing it. So once you've got one of these spray ones, this is the key thing, you can see it here, spray engine, that's what you need. Spray engine, if you don't have that, none of the features, none of these options will be available. Right, next step is you need to go here. To You've got spray area, you can modify these settings and you can tweak it as you go. I think probably I'll still be learning which, which works, which doesn't work. I think it's best to keep things fairly low, so count, keep that to one. If you put it up to the largest amount, it will slow things down. So you've got here diameter, you can change that. And if you reduce it down, weirdly, what it does, it compresses the brush stroke. So if you push it up maximum, it sort of scatters it out more. So I think it's nice to have it fairly low. But the key thing is this option, spray shape. So select there. At the moment it's rectangle, which is not what I want, but you can go down to image. Don't bother with this at first, width and height, it will set it for you again. And you can always reset it. So click there, and then of course what always puts you in a different place to what you want to be. Just gonna to go to my actual folder for Critter Spray Brushes, and there it is. And I'm just gonna select the brush, that one. That was, you could, obviously any design that you've got, but to select one of those and click open. And now you've got it stored away, that brush. And you can see it sets it, because it was 300 by 300. But you can resize it. If you don't want it to be 300 by 300, you might like it a bit smaller. Now you can push it further out if you want. Obviously it's gonna be a bit more distorted and not so good. And then you can modify this. Now brush tips does seem to have effect of maybe distribution, 
to be honest, at this stage, I haven't found a particular pattern that I understand what it does with the brush tips. Maybe I'm kidding myself that it does anything. And that often is the case with me. I'm going through it, trying to work out all the various features. Now you've got here spacing, you can modify the spacing, you can make, again, that seems to have effects sometimes, maybe depending on the size of the brush. Opacity, I'm not gonna go for. To enable it, always just click here. Enable pen, and you can actually set various things and you've got a number of different settings here. You can try them out. Sometimes they don't appear to have any effect. So if you try it and suddenly think, you know what, rate does nothing, airbrush does nothing. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm not gonna have that selected. So size, yep, you can have it randomized size there. You've got the size you can, by pressure. And blending mode. Probably always best to go for normal. Shape dynamics, I'm going for random size. So it will vary the size, make it small, make it big. Now I don't want fixed rotation. I'm gonna go for randomized rotation. I'm not certain why it actually has that set and that set. How you could have fixed rotation with randomized rotation doesn't make much sense. And you've also got angle weight. You can modify the direction of your brush stroke, etc. However, color. That's a key thing. If you want this, don't have to. Random, you can actually get randomized so you can just see it as it changes color there. Might want it maximum like that, 130. Push it up to the limit, you can really get a whole lovely color range. Also, you can do saturation, so you make it gray, or go fully saturated. Or change the value, make it very dark, or make it very light. And then, well, color per particle, I would suggest probably want to keep that on. You don't have to. If you turn it off, I mean, obviously there, the preview doesn't look very much. I personally prefer it that way. It applies it all the time, just changing the color constantly. Fill background, if you've got a background color of green or blue, or whatever, it will add that into the mix. And I quite like these ones. Just try these out, mix with background color. They seem to have an effect. Rotation, not particularly concerned about. Obviously I've got random rotation. Airbrush, not gonna, you can modify these settings. Override, personally, I think just keep it fairly low. But again, just modify it, see what it looks. And you've got this preview, this scratch pad. So you can just try it out. So you just apply it over there and you can see your brush stroke. And again, rate, turn it off. I mean, some of these seem to have very subtle effects and it might depend on different things. And likewise, wash, build up. Personally, when you look at it, hardly any difference. I'm certain there is. It says here between two build and wash, try them. Okay, so you've got that. You've created your brush, you're really happy with the brush. And I would suggest at this point, save it. Save a new brush preset. I'm just gonna click there. And then you can see the other design. You've got this design here, scratchy line bent. That's one of my ones. But you can clear the thumbnail and then you can apply it. And it's great to have a, a design so you can see what the design is. So you've got your scratchy line. Now, obviously, give it a different thing than that. Abstract uh, lines two. I've already got one already called one. So click save. Now, once you've got that, you can see over here you've got your thumbnail. However, if you go back to this one, let's just go back to this one. This is the one that I was working on. And you may find now you've got this, which is not what you want probably for this one because it, you've got already a, but you can always go up here. It's a weird way of working, but you can click here and you can always reset it. Just reset it and it's back to what it was. And then apply again, you can see it's back to before. However, let's just go back to the new brush and here's the new brush. Now you've got this, slightly counterintuitive. It's not really size. To my mind, it's more scattering feature. So if you push the size up to 352, it just scatters it. it doesn't change the size of anything. It's just the range of the, the actual application, the area that's covered, more area. So if you want to make a very, very narrow, so put it down to 1.26 and Again, edit and clear. 
Let's just clear that so you can see it. Now when you apply it, you get a very, very narrow brush stroke. You get obviously the size of the brush. That's still by the, sh the shape. And you can apply it like that. And of course you can apply it to a paint layer. You just got a paint layer there, apply the whole thing. Maybe you just apply it a little bit. You can always apply it on layers. So just create that, create another layer, new, new add paint layer and create another paint layer. Maybe add layer effects and other things, modify it using filters. Go to filters, adjust it, modify the colors, dodge HSV, and you can tweak it. If it actually moves, yeah, it's gonna do that. Click OK. And you can see, you can change your brush stroke. So there it is, just create all kinds of amazing brushes using this approach. Well, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. It's always great to know. Thank you much.